today we're going to talk about jump starting batteries and why you shouldn't do that at least not without doing a proper diagnostic of the battery first there are so many youtube videos say oh just jump start that battery it will be fine and in many cases that work but you shouldn't do that unless you understand the risk because there is a risk of the battery actually catching fire first of all some batteries might actually have a real BMS protection circuit and if you're just gonna connect another battery directly to the terminals uh, you can either just blow a fuse or you can destroy the electronics of that battery. Both of these batteries have real BMS that's turning off the power. Here we can see the power of this one with low voltage cells is 6.8 but it's turned off on the terminals. And this uh, little higher voltage one is 15.6 but on the terminals, it's just 2.4. So you couldn't even jumpstart these batteries. All you would do is destroying them, potentially. Now, first you need to figure out what's wrong with the battery before you jumpstart them. All the cells are 1.3 volt. So this is actually a battery that you could jumpstart. Now, the lower the voltage, the bigger the risk. And this is 1.3 per cell, not for the whole battery pack. Reviving cells that are over 2 volts are no problem. You don't even need to remove them from the battery pack to be safe as long as you monitor them. If it's under 2 volts, I would recommend removing them from the battery pack and charging them up individually and see if they get very hot. Then the resistance is too high and then you should scrap them and replace them. But if you were to jump start a battery like this, this one has one dead cell group. What do you think would happen? to this battery. Here we have the dead cell group and you would have to charge the battery pretty long before this one came up to 3 volts. It's just 208 millivolts. But while you're charging the whole battery pack, the other cell groups, like this one, that is 3.8. Now this cell group would be severely overcharged, maybe 4.3, 4.4 or 4.5 volts. And that is when batteries can start catch on fire. So that's why jump starting a battery should never be done before you do a proper diagnostics. I'm gonna actually try and jump start this, not this but that one, because I never tried that before. But I need another donor since this battery seems to have BMS. I select this multivolt uh, Hikuki battery since I don't really have any use for them since all the electronics are bricked. Now you don't want to jump start it directly. You do want to control it somehow, you do want to control the current. When reviving cells, it's very important to use low current because otherwise the electricity will be converted to heat that might damage the cells or if you're unlucky, even start thermal runaway. And for that you need some kind of resistors. I have a few power resistors here and they are not recommended since they are very expensive and they can handle 100 watts. I will go ahead and order something called cement resistors which are a lot cheaper and can handle about 10 watts. And now I checked a little bit with Ohm's law and you should have somewhere in the range of maybe 50 to 100 ohms in resistance to make sure the current is around 100 to 200 millivolts or something like that. Now all I could find is a 120 ohm resistor so it will go a little bit slower. So I'm gonna start by hooking up the donor and if you work with batteries you always have nickel lying around and those make for excellent terminals. And if you put the resistor in the positive or negative really doesn't matter from what I know. But hey, I'm no doctor. And it's 122 ohms. And also selected thin wires that will also limit the possible current that can go through. And since this one has a BMS, I will connect it directly to the cell. 6.8. Now I think we are ready. And now we can also monitor the voltage of the cells. And if you have a thermal camera, it could be a good idea to use it. Now, some of the cells here might be willing to accept a charge, but there are 10 cells in here and some of them might not. And then they will start getting hot instead of getting charged. And as you can see, the voltage is rising pretty slow. So this was, was a pretty decent uh, resistor. You do not want to rise more than 0 0.1 volts per second. You can also check if this one gets hot, but I don't think we pushing many amps through here. So now we're up to 11 volts. You need to go to about 14, 15 before it could potentially charge in a charger. 
but doing it this low is the safest way and all you really need is a resistor and a multimeter and the multimeter is to read the cells before you do anything silly so let's do some individual cell measuring 2.3 now if this one doesn't line up with the values you get before but my, maybe one cell group has died or popped the CID but all the cell group seems to be increasing at the same pace this one is leading the pack so it's been sitting here for almost an hour now and I think we are ready to try the charger we're up to 14.15 volts 2.8 2.8 it seems to be charging so that's pretty good to know the other 1.3 battery I will upload the cells manually with the uh, capacity tester that also charges an uh, IMAX B6 so that one takes a little bit longer but it seems to be working so I will leave this on the charger and we will test the capacity and see if it was worth it